Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick, or The Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video, we got my week number 18 running back start or sit decisions. Inside today's video, we're going to be going in-depth into every single matchup from all the games on Saturday to Sunday, and I'll be telling you guys whether I believe you should start or sit the running backs in all of those games. But before we could get into things, I would like to ask that if you guys are new to the channel and you do end up enjoying today's video, that you please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, whether you are new to the channel or not, please make sure that you leave a like on today's video it would help me out a ton and if you do want to follow me on twitter please do so at notorious fntsy today's video is being brought to you guys by DraftKings sportsbook we're going to be talking about a little bit later so without further ado let's get into my week number 18 championship round running back start or sit decisions we begin with the first of two games on Saturday, the Kansas City Chiefs at the Las Vegas Raiders. In this matchup for the Raiders, Josh Jacobs is a must-start every single week up against the Chiefs defense that's pretty average. And with how good the Raiders offense looked last week up against one of the best defenses in the NFL and the 49ers, I think Josh Jacobs is in a very solid spot here to potentially finish as the number one running back on the week. The Kansas City Chiefs have no reason to sit their starters as they're still fighting for that one seed. So Jarek McKinnon McKinnon is a must start in this scenario as well. The Raiders defense is soft as baby shit and McKinnon appears to be the running back that you want to be starting out of the two. At the end of the day though, I still do believe Isaiah Pacheco is start worthy in a lot of situations due to the fact that we have a lot of games where things are incredibly murky, where there might be running backs being benched for the Giants, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, for a couple of teams here and that could elevate Isaiah Pacheco up the rankings. I do believe that the team is going to play all game unless they end up kicking the ever living shit out of the Raiders, which again, with how the Raiders played last week, unless that was just a kind of flash in the pan, I think that the Chiefs are going to have to play their main squad the whole game. I think Pacheco could have a big game here. Again, the Raiders defense is soft as baby shit for the other Raiders running back here, Amir Abdullah. He is going to be a sit. Next up, we move to Saturday night football because you waited all day for Saturday night. The Tennessee Titans at the Jacksonville Jaguars, a battle for the AFC South in this spot. Assuming Derrick Henry plays, you start this guy, whether he's playing up against the Jacksonville Jaguars defense or the 85 Bears. Derrick Henry is one of the best running backs in the NFL. He is the focal point of this team, the focal piece, the key piece. I know the Jaguars defense has been on fire recently, but I still trust Derrick Henry to potentially drop 25 plus points in this spot. Travis Etienne exploded last week, had a very solid showing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think he could look again, uh, look good yet again here up against the Tennessee Titans defense. The other running backs in this spot are sits, assuming Derrick Henry plays. You don't want anything to do with Hassan Haskins and Jermichael Hasty will magically somehow find the end zone in this game. I already know, but Ultimately, I do not trust starting him. Next up, we move to the beginning of the Sunday slate, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. This is a scenario where I truly believe that the Buccaneers are going to bench their starters. I don't think that Tampa Bay Tom Brady is going to play in this game. I do think that's entirely possible that if Leonard Fournette does end up playing, that they severely limit the amount of snaps that he plays. Maybe we see a little bit more Rashad White, but if Blaine Gabbert or Kyle Trask is under center, then uh, even up against a garbage Atlanta Falcons defense, I'm just not too sure how effectively they're going to be able to move the ball. So Leonard Fournette, as well as Rashad White, are going to be sits unless it gets to Sunday and magically we figure out that Tom Brady and the gang are going to be starting. Cordero Patterson scored a touchdown last week, but ultimately it's very clear for the Falcons that Algier is the guy. Algier is going to be a must start for me. He has looked very efficient over the last couple of games, been putting up some solid fantasy football numbers. I know, again, Patterson did score last week. He found his way into the end zone, but ultimately, again, Algier is the guy in this backfield, and the best part about the Falcons is even if they're getting the shit beat out of them by the Buccaneers practice squad, Tyler Algier will still be putting up points because they run the ball even when they're losing by a million. Next up, we got the Patriots at the Buffalo Bills. So obviously, we all watched Monday Night Football, at least I assume most of you guys were watching, and we saw what happened to Hamlin. That was obviously terrible. They now have stated that they are not going to play this game, Bills, Bengals, this week. Who knows what is going to, like, what Bills squad they're going to roll out. Are they going to bench players? Is Josh Allen going to play? How does this all work out? Because realistically, the Bills are fighting for the one seed, but what happens if they don't play that game? 
You know, it, it, it's really a scary situation. We all saw what happened on the field. I hope that Hamlin ends up okay. Obviously, very hard to watch, and the the situation is now pushed even further back, right? I know everyone is thinking about Hamlin, and I am as well, but in terms of fantasy football, in terms of the NFL, who knows what the Bills are going to be doing? Are the Bills even going to be ready for this game? The pen, like, I, I don't know. This is a very hard situation to even talk about. I I think the Bills starters are going to play. The Patriots run defense is pretty good. And with how this is a committee, I'm going to sit Singletary and James Cook. I'm going to play Ramondre Stevenson up against a stout Bills defense. I still think Ramondre Stevenson is the clear RB1 on this team. Damian Harris is a sit. Again, uh, I really hope. Hamlin's okay. Normally, these videos are all about having fun and cracking some jokes, but this is just a terrible situation. So I really do hope that everything ends up okay. The guy seems like a great guy from everything I've seen, and it's just terrible that something like this happens. So again, I, I really have no idea what to think about what's going to happen with the Bills and all. Like we'll see. Um, just ju just a terrible situation again that that's really all i could say about this so next up we we got the vikings at the chicago bears dalvin cook david montgomery you're gonna start him dalvin cook shit the bed mightily last week he had an absolutely atrocious game david montgomery the exact opposite played incredibly well uh i'm gonna start both of them even though khalil herbert was back last week we did see david montgomery still able to be very effective in that game up against a garbage minnesota vikings defense i expect david montgomery to step up again dalvin cook shit the bed we've seen a couple of games this season where dalvin cook was far from ideal but ultimately i still do think he is one of the better running backs in the nfl the bears have one of the worst run defenses in the nfl the vikings are a bit of a disaster obviously they're a bit fraudulent as i've kind of been talking about all year long but ultimately i still do you think I would be playing Dalvin Cook here in week number 18. Alexander Madison and Khalil Herbert are both sits. Next up, we move to a matchup between the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts, a matchup that everyone wants to watch on Sunday. Of course, Zach Moss is going to be a start for me for the Indianapolis Colts. The Texans, again, just a bottom of the barrel garbage defense. So ultimately, I do think Zach Moss could get it done, but I'm not going to sit here and give this guy the fucking gawk gawk 9,000, the dick suckeroo, because ultimately, even though the Texans defense is so bad it's very clear that this is a committee between Zach Moss and Deion Jackson so while I think that Zach Moss is the guy to play in this scenario he's not a guy that I ranked anywhere near the top 12 Rolls Royce Freeman as well as Dare Agunbowale for the Texans are going to be sits if there was a gun to my head I had to start one of them it would be Royce Freeman but then you're just praying up to the fantasy gods that something great goes your way because you don't really want anything to do with the Texans offense and again Deion Jackson's going to be a sit. Next up, we move to the New York Jumbo Jets at the Miami Dolphins. I have no idea how the NFL playoffs are going to work if the Bills versus Bengals game doesn't get played. The Dolphins need to win this game to get in. Who knows about if the Bills are going to bench their starters or not. The Bills need to win for the Dolphins to get in. Just a fucking tough situation to talk about. Uh, the Jets' run defense is not the best. Their pass defense, obviously, A1 like the steak sauce. I am hoping that the Dolphins kick the ever-living shit out of the Jets here so we can make it to the playoffs, and then hopefully my guy Tua Tungavailoa returns. Who knows at this point? Um, I hope Raheem has a good game. The, the Jets running backs are just disasters. The Jets literally were a dumpster fire up against the Seahawks. The Dolphins defense is bad. So I think this could be a get right game for the Jets, even though they're out of the playoffs. Zonovan Knight's a guy that's on the bubble of being start worthy, but I definitely wouldn't feel confident in doing so, which is why he's a sit. Michael Carter's the clear backup for Knight, so he's a sit. Jeff Wilson Jr., also pretty interesting. We've seen at points in the season, Jeff Wilson look clearly better than Raheem Mostert. Other points, looks like Mostert's clearly the guy. Uh, again, if you have to play Raheem Mostert, he's really one of those guys where it's like, oh, I have to play Raheem Mostert. Not really. It's like, 
Oh, I get to play Raheem Mostert. It's not like you're fucking excited to throw him into your lineup. Next up, we move to the Carolina Panthers going up against the New Orleans Saints in New Orleans. Alvin Kamara has been relatively decent as of recently. The Panthers defense is severely banged up. So I do think Alvin Kamara could be able to get it done in this spot. I think the Saints have no real reason to bench their starters. So I think we're going to see a healthy dosage of Alvin Kamara. Last week, I was very hesitant when it came to Dante Foreman. I talked about how, hey, while the team ran an absolute fucking train, they formed an Eiffel Tower and butt-fucked the Detroit Lions just about a week ago. At the end of the day, I didn't feel confident saying Foreman's the guy or Hubbard's the guy. It seemed like a clear 50-50 split, and it seemed like a scenario where you wanted to avoid it last week. Now, in some scenarios on the Sunday live stream, I told people to play Dante Foreman, but at the end of the day, my confidence level in him was at an all-time low. This week, up against the Saints, uh, the Saints' run defense is pretty decent. I, I just think there's a committee that I want to stay away from. David Johnson is the backup running back for the New Orleans Saints. He, for some reason, gets more usage than he should but uh, he's definitely not a start-worthy running back before we pivot on to the rest of the games here for week number 18. I would like to give you guys a quick word for our friends and our sponsor of today's video, DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a brand new user to DraftKings Sportsbook, you can click on the link in the video description down below and you bet $5 on any sport pregame money line, you will receive $200 in free bets instantly. Your bet could lose by a million. You could win your bet. Your bet could push. Doesn't matter. You will be guaranteed to receive your $200 in free bets. You got to make sure that you use them within 168 hours, seven days of receiving them because then they will disappear. So make sure you take advantage of this offer. If you're a new user to DraftKings, build your bankroll right now, bet $5 on any sport pregame money line, and you'll receive $200 in free bets instantly. Again, got to be a new user. Click on the link in the video description or the pinned comment. It would help me out a ton. It's also going to help you out a bunch. So next up, we move to a matchup between the Cleveland Browns at the Pittsburgh Steelers. If everything goes the way that it could and the Pittsburgh Steelers end up in the playoffs and the Dolphins don't, I am going to be a very sad man. Nine Inch Nicholas Chubb stepped up and played pretty well last week for the Cleveland Browns. Now, again, it wasn't what we were used to with Nick Chubb. It wasn't that crazy top five game that was possible with Jacoby Brissett under center. Deshaun Watson looked all right in that game. I still think Deshaun Watson, uh, there's a lot to be looking for compared to what we're used to with the past of Watson. Uh, Ultimately, though, I'm still playing Nick Chubb, but the matchup does concern me against the Steelers. Najee Harris has been running excellently. The Cleveland Browns have one of the worst run defenses in the NFL Though it is important to note that Jalen Warren is still getting work. Jalen Warren, normally we're used to with Mike Tomlin, there being a clear hierarchy at the running back position. Normally, they utilize the workhorse running back strategy, the bell cow running back, where that's the guy, Le'Veon Bell, that's the motherfucker. James Conner, when Le'Veon Bell's too busy riding a fucking jet ski in Miami, James Conner's the bell cow. Najee Harris last year, the bell cow, but now they're kind of toying with more of a committee. Now, it's not a committee like Donta Foreman and Chuba Hubbard, but it's not like Jalen Warren's just kind of watching from the outside, and if Najee Harris gets tired, then maybe Jalen Warren fucking tags in. It's more of like, hey, at points in the game, we're going to let Warren cook. Uh, again, I still think Najee Harris could have a great game here. The The Browns defense is bottom of the barrel against the run. So I like Kareem Hunt and Jalen, or I don't like Kareem Hunt or Jalen Warren, uh, but I do think Jalen Warren's a good enough player to where if he was given the reins, he would succeed. But again, Najee Harris is the guy as of right now. Next up, we got the new football giants going up against the philadelphia eagles in philadelphia the giants clinch a playoff berth seems like saquon saquon barkley is going to be ending up on the bench this game it seems like they should bench their starters now again this video is being recorded on tuesday if we end up on sunday and brian day bowl comes out and says oh everyone's gonna play then you know what i was wrong but looking at this from an outside standpoint an outside pov it really does seem like they're gonna end up benching their starters so saquon matt burita on the bench uh matt burita if daniel jones was playing would be fine but Teron Taylor would be under center if they were benching their starters. Uh, Miles Sanders has been pretty bad recently, if I'm being completely honest with you. Jalen Hurts might play. He might not play. This game is vital to the Eagles. Doesn't mean shit to the Giants. 
Gardner Minshew should be just fine here. But if Jalen Hurts plays, I think that definitely gives a boost to Miles Sanders. But again, I still do really think that even if Gardner is under center, which I think is probably like 85%. That's what we see that I still think that Miles Sanders could be able to get it done in this spot. Next up, we got another NFC East, NFC Beast matchup. The Cowboys at the left hand up. Who are we? The Commanders. The Commanders play Carson Wentz last week. And just like everyone who has fucking two eyeballs could see they were going to lose. Carson Wentz sucks absolute donkey hog. He's terrible. He sucks ass. And yet Riverboat Ron's dumbass plays him. And then on the podium after the game, Ron Rivera didn't even know his team was getting bounced from the fucking playoffs. This guy is clueless. The Commanders with Carson Wentz was a recipe for disaster. There's teams like the Colts and the Commanders that are destined for failure because the up, upper management are a bunch of fucking idiots. Why the fuck is Carson Wentz in the game, not Taylor Heineke? Make it make sense. Now, I'm not a Commanders fan. I could care less about the Commanders. But it's just sad to see for the Commanders fans who root for this team. They seem to be playing well with Heineke. And then they go back to this schlub Carson Wentz and they lose. Shocker. Cowboys should steamroll here. Zeke should have a big game if Tony Pollard is cleared to come back. I'm playing him as well. So Zeke and Tony Pollard are must starts. Commander's defense, pretty meh. Uh, Brian Robinson Jr. runs effectively. Um, should have scored a touchdown, but Carson Wentz vultured that from him. Antonio Gibson might play. He might not play. Brian Robinson's just a guy that his ceiling isn't very high, right? His ceiling isn't one of those tall-ass buildings in Dubai. His ceiling is like... 17 points, 18 points. If he has an amazing game, his best game, but his floor is pretty safe. Like, you know, he's going to get 10 points, but he's not going to be a guy that wins you your week, but he's also not going to be a guy that metaphorically sinks the ship Titanic style. Next up, we move to the LA Chargers versus the Broncos country. Let's ride. The Chargers are a team that it's pretty up in the air. Are they going to play their starters? Are they going to sit their starters? If they play their starters. Austin Eckler is a must start. He is literally the best running back in fantasy football right now. If I'm just trying to project what would Nick do uh, in August when he's drafting next year or this year, technically it's 2023 already. Happy new year, everybody. Um, I'm drafting Austin Eckler number one overall. I was a guy that even last year talked up how I thought Austin Eckler might be worthy of the 101. No, I never took him at the 101, but I should have. I should have. I've always loved Austin Eckler. The Broncos' defense is amazing against the, the pass. Not so hot against the run, so there should be a big game out of Eckler. If he plays, if they bench Justin Herbert, the pervert, and they go to the backup, who's not very good, then Joshua Kelly would be a sit as well. Latavius Murray and Chase Edmonds are sits. Uh, neither of them very good. If I had to start one of them, though, I think I'd lean with Chase Edmonds. Next up, we move to the LA Rams at the Seattle Seahawks. The Seahawks need to win this game to get into the playoffs, and then I believe they need the Packers to lose to get in, I think. Uh, again, I, I don't necessarily remember, so maybe I'm off on that. Maybe they, yeah, I think they need the Lions to lose, but again, not for sure, but the Seahawks are still in playoff contention. They're not benching anyone. So Kenneth Walker is going to play. Kenneth Walker has looked uh, pretty good all season long. Now he's had some stretches of games where he's not so hot, but ultimately he is a really solid running back. The Rams defense uh, doesn't really move the needle for me. It doesn't really scare me. So I think Walker should have a good game. Cam Akers is is probably the funniest player in all fantasy football because there was a lot of people that were talking this guy up as a top four round draft pick. Now, I was someone who was pretty indifferent, I believe, in the draft season on Cam Akers. I drafted a lot of teams. He's not on any of my teams. But he also wasn't a guy that I was full on fading. It was more like coming off the injury. I'm just not too sure he has it in him. And then we get the, the first couple of games and he's playing like absolute garbage. And then it comes out that around the trade deadline, he wants to be traded. He doesn't get traded. And then we're seeing these other running backs work in for the Rams. And then out of nowhere, over the last couple of weeks, Cam Akers, like an RKO from Randy Orton, becomes magically the running back one. And he has ran it with strides. He looks like a incredibly talented running back. And I've always thought he was talented. 
I was just worried about the injury. Going up against the Seahawks defense, Cam Akers has the upside to be the number one running back on the week. Their handcuffs are a bench. DJ, wiki wiki, Dallas is a bench as well as Malcolm Brown. Next up, we got the Arizona Cardinals at the San Francisco 49ers and big cock Brock Purdy. The Arizona Cardinals here not really playing for much. Uh, this is going to be J.J. Watt's last ever game. Round of applause for the boy J.J. Watt, one of the most fun players I watched. Uh, I guess not really my childhood, kind of. My adolescence, is that the term? I don't know. But uh, yes, I, he's been playing the league since I was like 11, I think. Truly an amazing player. Um, so sad to see J.J. Watt go, but uh, great on him uh, in retirement. I love J.J. Watt. James Conner. I don't even, like, someone, I watched Red Zone, and I was watching the Dolphins game. The Cardinals game last week just was not on Red Zone. Nothing was happening. Uh, they were moving the ball at a pace at the pace that Turtles have intercourse, which is extremely slow, if you didn't know. So I, I don't really see James Conner splashing against the Niners because of how good their defense is, but their defense did flounder around, flop around like a fish out of water last week. McCaffrey is banged up, uh, so I am worried about him potentially getting benched. But if he plays, you're obviously going to play him. The Cardinals' defense is really bad. Uh, if he doesn't play, then Jordan Mason would be the guy to play, in my opinion. The numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Corey Clements, the handcuff for James Conner. He is a bench. Next up, we move to game number uh, 15 here, the Ravens at the Bengals. Now, this is a game that they haven't even scheduled a time for yet, which is weird, I think. The Bengals were obviously a part of that game last night. Very up in the air on what's going to happen. Um, just something to monitor. Uh, Dobbins against the Bengals defense should be decent. The Ravens are, both these teams are playing for something. So I fully expect both teams to go out there and put their best out there. Lamar, don't think he's going to play. Like, I, I, it feels like for weeks, everyone's always like, oh, Nick, Lamar's going to play. And everything I've been reading says, Nick, Lamar's not going to fucking play. Lamar might not play. If even if they make it to the playoffs, like I think he would just play, right? But I think deep down, if next or the next game, week 19, the playoffs, if that wasn't the playoffs, if that was just another game, I, I don't think Lamar Jackson would play. That's just kind of how I see things. Dobbins, I'm playing, Mixon, I'm playing. Uh, obviously, we don't know how good Mixon would have done last night. He's just a guy I play every week. Uh, the Ravens' defense is good against the run, though. Gus Edwards is a sit, as is Samaj P. Ryan. Final game here, Lions at Packers. This game could be very interesting because it could be for the playoffs. Could be a dud because I'm pretty sure if the Seahawks win, the Lions can't make the playoffs. Uh, Swift, Jamal Williams, Swift, you bastard. You mother... You motherfucker! All season... You bend us over the table. Dan Campbell fucking us in the ass without the use of lube. And then magically, week 17, when everyone who has DeAndre Swift's team is out, you win, you, you play well, fuck you. Honestly, that's how I feel. I love DeAndre Swift. Crazy. Jamal Williams, I'm playing him as well against the Packers. This game reeks. <laughs> Smell that? Smells like points. Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, you're starting both of them as well. These are two of the best running back tandems in the National Football League. So, game reeks of points. Should be high scoring. I like Aaron Jones. I like A.J. Dillon. I like Swift. I like Jamal with two A's, Williams. Uh, and if you guys didn't see that clip of Jamal Williams after their game last week where he had to explain to the reporter how to say Pokemon correctly, it was very funny. So, thank you guys all so much for watching. If you ended up enjoying, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below as well as hitting that like button. It would help me out a ton if you want to follow me on Twitter. Please do so at NotoriousFNTSY. Today's video, again, is brought to you guys by DraftKings Sportsbook. If you're a brand new user and bet $5 on any sport pregame money line, you receive $200 in free bets. Uh, even if your bet wins, loses, or pushes. So make sure you guys check that out. I love you guys all so much. Again, uh, prayers up to Hamlin. I really do hope that he is okay. Uh, it, it's a tough situation to talk about for fantasy football because, again, I'm not trying to sound like some dick who doesn't care about the guy. Obviously, I care. I was watching the game, and it shook me. I was very surprised that I even saw something like that happen on the football field. My job is to talk about fantasy football, so I'm also going to talk about it. But at the end of the day, I do hope the guy's okay. There hasn't really been any reports today about the situation. Just, just got to hope he's okay. So again, thank you guys all for watching. I love all you guys. Hope you all have a great guys' day. And as always, good boy!